This is a brief illustration intended to show some of the differences between Kant on the one hand and Mill on the other in terms of their evaluation of a moral action. So imagine we have a person here on this side of the screen on the left and they have a gun and they just shot the gun and uh, on the right hand side we have a wonderfully drawn happy little child playing with a red balloon so there's the beautiful red balloon I should have left it uh, unfilled and so the child is happy having a good day playing with the balloon but here's this man shooting a gun in his direction so Kant wants to know, uh, what are the motives behind the action? Why is the man shooting the gun? And Mill wants to know, uh, what happens next? What are the consequences of the action? And Mill has to know the result in order to evaluate whether it's morally good or not. And if we fill in some more details with some awesome artwork, we see that there is a vicious monster. And that is one well-drawn vicious monster, has a tail, and it's about to attack this poor child playing with the balloon. And uh, if for Kant on this side of the left, if the man is successful at shooting the monster or the child, it doesn't matter. What, matter, it, what matters are the motives. And so uh, for Kant, he wants to know something like, is the man following a maxim such as, when it's possible, protect innocent life from harm? If he is, if that's why the man is shooting, well, that's all Kant needs to know. End of story. It's a good action because that is a maxim that you could will that everyone follow. For Mill, of course, he wants to know what happens next. Is the man successful in shooting the monster and saving the child? Does the man accidentally hit the child? What happens next? And that will determine whether it's a good action or not. We have to see the results. In this case, let's imagine the successful shooting of the monster and the blood is spurting out everywhere.